Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Monday morning trading room. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> Aspen writes. Good morning, Ray. Yeah, Ray's not in the room this morning, or maybe he is. Hold on, maybe he's hiding here somewhere. Nope, don't see him right now. That's right. Ray and I are alternating weeks to make it a little bit easier. All right. Um, doggone it. <laughs> okay, I got the screen share going. It's only been a few days. You think I would still remember how to use this stuff? The go to webinars being difficult. All right. Uh, so you should be able to see my charts. I see a couple new people in the room here this morning. Welcome. Uh, feel free to ask questions. There's a Q&A box that you can type questions into. Uh, what you're looking at here is the complete diversified trading system along with the Raptor and the Bollinger Band suite. So here in the top left, we have the Hawk Micro Scalper, top right Falcon Swing Trader, bottom left Eagle Trend Trader, bottom right uh, of course is the Raptor and you'll notice underneath each chart I'm also running the Bollinger Band suite which is an add-on from Indicator Warehouse and the market I'd like to follow is the NASDAQ which I feature on all four charts there let's take a look here at the daily and we finally got that breakout last week that we've been waiting on. The NASDAQ now on a bit of a tear. And I told you that when we see the breakout, we want to see increasing volume. So it looks like volume up a little bit. Friday's volume off a touch, but hey, it was Friday. So volume in the main increasing ever so slightly uh, on the breakout, that's good for the bulls because that would suggest that the breakout's going to stick somewhere through here over the next few days or weeks, potentially even a month, the market will make some sort of pullback and retest this whole 8,000 zone that we've just broken out from. And that, of course, will be an important time because once the market shows us that, then we'll have it pinched. We'll have the market between a rock and a hard place, as they say, and we'll be able to uh, frame it up to buy or sell according to what it's going to do next. Uh, right now, you can see we've got a bit of a downside gap. So we left off Friday, looks like around 81.50. We're currently trading 82.20 and change. So we've got uh, about a 50-point gap below us. We'll see whether the market tries to fill that here this morning. In the meantime... We'll let it settle in a bit, although overall we do appear to be a little bit more bullish. There's a nice overnight trend. Your first in sync eagle signal right here, the red bar buy off the opening buzzer, the hard edge. That should actually have a little bit of follow through to it. All right, what time is it? Uh, we're only about four minutes in. Oh, they just hopped past me. I was going to try to take this uh, Falcon trend change signal. Well, maybe I can get a second push on it. So all I'm going to do is this little reactionary zone that we're looking at right now. That's going to be my second push opportunity.
it's uh, very early, obviously. We're only a few minutes into the session, but sometimes we can grab some early momentum if it's there. Fairly balanced right now. You can see we got that little bit of a sideways drift going on pre market and here now out of the open. What I'm referring to is this. Trend line trying to change, but I will give them just this little bit here. If we get any lower than this, if the trend line actually does start to flip over, I'll pull the pin on the trade. Close that out, put this away. So the odds are when you have a trend and the market starts to go sideways, the odds are in your favor that it will continue out of the trend in a bullish fashion. It is feasible to put a just in case order to buy up there, just in case the market explodes and you don't see it coming. You could put an order to buy right above that high. Alternatively, the safer plan is to allow the market to break out and then retest. Once it does the retest, then we've got the market in a corner. We know we can buy it up here. We know we can short it down there. Anything inside this trading range is going to be difficult trading. You can see we're now producing a number one signal to buy. That is with trend. So, you know, staying with the trend is always more desirable. Should I tighten up that order? Hmm. This Raptor order. All right, so I'm going to delete my order to buy above the high. I'm going to try this Raptor order. This number one signal that we have developing. And we're holding up on the secondary resistance zone pretty well. The Bollinger Suite is in sync. The trading bands are in sync. They just kind of took their foot off the gas here a little bit.
All right, there we go. Okay, I'm going to get ready now with my break even. If I can get the, yeah, there we go. That's about three quarters of the way. Oh, two thirds of the way, anyway. Don't flinch. Get going. See, they're reacting now to this high. Going to be looking for a little breakout as the buyers. There's going to be breakout buyers here. Hopefully the seller's not going to jump on them too much. There we go. Hooray. And now we're getting a nice little hard edge buy as well. But as I pointed out here on the Eagle, now that we have the breakout, ideally for this kind of strategy, this breakout strategy, I like to have a couple of bars now react. That gives me a little bit more confidence. in placing an order above the high, sorry. Yeah, okay, so there we go. There, this now at the breakout. So I can put a just-in-case order to buy just above that high. This is the retest now. The market broke above the highs. Do the buyers have enough going on to continue the market higher or will the breakout fail? This is the question on the table. And now that we're getting the retest, this retest actually a little bit deep. Normally, I don't like to see the retest fall that low.
no, you can see they're starting to drift. All right, well, we had the a good idea there, but the market not really committed to the breakout at this point. So long as the market's moving in the sideways trading range, it's going to be tough trading. You could, when you identify a sideways range, you can wait for the breakout to occur, or if you're more aggressive, you know there's going to be buyers down here in the bottom quarter, bottom third. There's going to be sellers up here. So what this means is when the market gets down here, you can look for any buy signal and look to buy. When the market gets up here, you can look for any sell signal and look to sell. It's uh, more aggressive, to be sure. And I wouldn't hold on for a big target if you're planning on doing something like that. Yeah, you can see a little bit of a pop up. <clears throat> the sellers pushing back. No real 
real commitment either way at the moment. You can see uh, if the market breaks here to the short side, I think there may actually be some follow through to it. But when the market is range bound like this, it's so tempting to throw orders in above the high, above the low, and just let the breakout fill your order. But there's going to be um, the, the fake break that we're always leery of. So sometimes the best thing to do is just to wait. All right, here we go. We're going to test the bottom end, it looks like. And we'll see if there's any kind of support for that when we get the breakout. Oh, and here on the Raptor, we've already a little ahead of the curve. We've got the number one signal brewing as the clouds cross over. And you could short it. Hmm, do I dare? No, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it properly today. 
Uh, trend chain signal already here in the Falcon. Of course, uh, first micro macro cross already in the Hawk. In fact, I think the Hawk is very, very close to finding its profit objective already. Let us see how the market responds as we get back toward the lows. Now, if it retreats from here, we could call this the test. Aha, uh -huh. all right. So even though we didn't break out, it's essentially the same thing. The sellers have attempted to move the market lower. The buyers are saying, oh, no, you don't. And now we'll see whether the sellers can come back and move the market down again. Now, ideally, this is the retest of sorts. If we can see the market head lower, uh, then we can cover this trade and we'll have the market pinched. Yep, see you later, Aspen. Aspen says, got to run. Well, the way the market is today, we're probably going to shut down the Sorry, shut down the room at the bottom of the hour anyhow. I'm just going to check the news sites.
Okay, one more bar here. There we go. Okay, now we've got the market in a bind. So the buyers have shown that they're trying to move the market up. And now the sellers are showing they want to move the market down. So we've got the market in a bit of a tight spot. Oh, you can see a nice little late filter entry signal there. Number three signal coinciding here on the Raptor. I'll I'll play this out here on the Raptor. Okay, I guess I better get a profit order in play. Come on, give me a couple of bars here. I'm going to be quick with my stops. All right, I'm going to, we're about halfway, so I'm going to take the trade to break even now. Other traders are going to see this now as the true breakout. Right? We looked at the early attempt and called it an attempted breakout. But other traders are going to look at this as the true breakout and they're going to look for a retest. That's why I'm being a little bit faster with my stops. And if I were braver, I would have taken the number three signal. In fact, I'm going to start to trail bar for bar, anything with a wick. Because if I get one reversal bar, chances are very good I'll get two. All right. So the market got down there, hit the profit objective. Now we're pausing ever so slightly. Somewhere in here, there should be a retest of that breakout. But a good trade. So I'm two for two. I'm profitable. You know, I would employ my trading quota and say, well, my trading day is done. Even though it's, you know, I'm up a little over $200 on two trades, $100 per contract ish. But remember, it's not the frequency of your trading that's going to make you money. It's being correct. obviously, but not losing your profit when you have it. If you can consistently turn a $100 profit per contract and do that two or three times a day, then you make more money by trading more contracts. So that $100 trade, if you're trading three contracts, now all of a sudden became a $300 trade. Now you could be up $600 on the day, four contracts, $400 a trade, you're, you're up $800, five contracts, and so on. So here now the seller's tipping their hand a little. And once more, you could put a just-in-case order to short down here. We're looking at the more of the textbook retest.
So I'm just waiting for the uh, retest now. Well, still retesting, still waiting. We're trading in slow motion. This is a good example of why I usually want to see two bars counter. You see how we only had the one bar? If I had placed my order to buy above this one bar, I'd currently be long. The market not really committed just yet. I'm going to set my profit orders. And now I got the market in a bind again. Sort of. All right, here we go. They're going to try to fill us maybe to the upside. You can see we're getting a number two signal. Oh, I don't know if the buyers got it in them. Here in... Uh, in British Columbia, there's private liquor stores, but everything still runs through the government distribution. I'm not sure if it's the same way in the States or not, but um, every fall they have the premium whiskey release. And it's usually very popular. It's uh, available through the government liquor stores and there's normally a lineup. Well, my friend went to the liquor release and he forgot to tell me. So I'm just I'm checking some of the uh, the whiskeys that they have out there. There were a couple interesting ones that they brought in. Uh, this one here <laughs> looks quite interesting, but I don't know if I want to spend seventeen hundred dollars. Twenty six year old, I'm sure it's very good. We have an informal whiskey club friends there's about 10 of us
So everybody, you know, throws in 20 or 30 or 50 bucks and we'll, we'll split a bottle so that you can at least see what it's like. The most expensive one we had recently was um, one of the guys in our group. He's kind of been collecting whiskeys for a while. He had a Brooklady. Shoot, what was it called? It was in a beautiful red bottle. Anyways, it was about a thousand dollar whiskey. A twenty-one year old, but you know what? It wasn't. I can't, it was very good, obviously, but I can't say it was any better than any other 18 or 20 or 21 year old whiskey I've tried. And at a thousand dollars a bottle, I think I would rather have three or sometimes even four really good whiskeys bottles of whiskeys <clears throat> but hey that's me All right, we got a 323 type setup. This is favorable for the sellers. If we come back with another number two signal, that will be more favorable for the buyers. Scott, with his usual wit and wisdom, <clears throat> isn't that pattern called poopy? <laughs> yes, this is a poopy pattern. Oh, Dan, sorry I missed your comment here. Dan says, a couple weeks ago on a rabbit hole Friday, you showed us some things with time charts that I've incorporated into my trading, combining the DTS system on mean wrinkles with a five-minute time chart. I look for the signals on DTS coupled with periods of consolidation on the time charts. It's been promising. Good. Glad to hear it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with running a time-based chart alongside your DTS charts. It gives you a different perspective. work 
backing themselves into a bit of a corner again here. All right, there's the number two signal. So now we've definitely got a, a reversal possibility. The trading band, very, very thin though. It's only 20 some odd ticks. If it were 40, 50, 60 ticks, it would definitely open itself up to a reverse. Oh, Scott's playing with some different tools. He says, I picked up some time tools from the Back to the Future guys. Wow, really something. Hmm. I think we were talking about that a little bit the other week um, about WD Gann and how his emphasis was actually on time over price. He didn't care so much about price as time. And it's hard to argue with his results. Oh, I see. Scott says, uh, when I was working with Sean, I did a screen share with a client and I saw his entries were so much ahead of mine. And when he walked me through what time stuff he was doing, I was shocked. Was he doing GAN stuff, Scott, or was he doing FIBS? I'm not going to ask you to, you know, give out their, um, their trading secrets, but it's always curious how other traders see things. I've always been a more of a momentum trader myself. I try to see which way the momentum is going and then trade accordingly. Um, yeah, Scott, I don't know if I can do a screen share. Scott's offering to do a screen share, but uh, if you can take a snapshot and send it to me. Yeah, or, or even do it later. Because sure as anything, I will bugger something up here on the uh, go-to webinar. Come on, just a little more, a little more of a push. One more bar and I will take it to break even.
All right. Come on, you guys. You're making me nervous. I'm going to start to trail anything with a tail to it. And if I can get this one bar to finish bullish, I will take the trade to break even. In fact, if I can even see a halfway decent bullish push, I will take the trade to break even. No, go away. All right, Mohan. Um, okay, I'm sorry I didn't get your emails, but I, all right, we're out at break even more or less. But we'll go over the chart settings here. You're having a little difficulty with the Raptor. It says mine is nothing like yours. Uh, I also need to know the other indicators on panel two. I have the overbought, oversold indicator. Okay, this is actually the the Bollinger uh, band suite, which we won't get into here at the moment, but let's deal first with your Raptor settings. If your Raptor does not look like mine, nine times out of 10, you are running a different brick size because my Raptor is just the default settings. So what you need to do is you need to go here to your data series. So right click on your chart, go to data series. You can also find data series up here. Open your data series window. And I bet you anything your brick size is probably set at five. So with the, the default brick size for the Raptor, for most markets, is eight. So you'll want to change your settings, your trend, and your reversal to eight on your mean Renko bars. The trend refers to the body size. The reversal refers to the length of the, the wick or the tail. So an eight by eight brick is what is recommended. And you click apply and your charts should start to look more like mine. As far as the Raptor itself, we'll go here to the indicator window. And if you highlight the Raptor, uh, all my settings are the defaults. So I haven't changed anything. But like I said, I can bet you almost dollars to donuts that you're running a different brick size. Now the Bollinger Band Suite down here below, this is an add-on. It's like the overbought, oversold, uh, which is also a very useful indicator. But if you wanted the Bollinger Band Suite, just waiting for things to load. Okay, if you go to Indicator Warehouse and you go to the little search icon and you type in Bollinger Band, you'll come up with this one right here, Bollinger Band Suite. I featured this one on one of our Rabbit Hole Fridays and it, I liked it so much, I left it on all my charts. The overbought, oversold will be similar, except this one uses uh, Bollinger Bands. 
Okay, so you can find out more about it there. The settings uh, for the Bollinger Band Suite are also the defaults, I believe. Uh, yeah, I think they are. I don't think I've changed anything. It looks like all default settings for that. Uh, a tough thing. Oh, look at that. I got tagged a little bit too early. Scoundrels. Something that is always um, a problem for traders is that they're always trying to find the perfect settings. You know, they're trying to find the perfect settings for the market. And while it's a good idea to try to optimize your settings for the market you're following, trading really is more than just finding the perfect setting for your stochastics or, you know, finding the right combination of MACD and exponential moving averages or, or whatever. You get my point. Uh, yes, great question here from Mohan. Mohan asks, the default Raptor means the Raptor for futures? Yes. If you're trading stocks or ETFs, we're going to have to um, adjust it a little bit. I'm going to put my email address here in the window. So you guys can make a note of it. All my emails are supposed to funnel to that inbox, but they don't always. So if you've written me and I haven't responded, it's not because I'm being a jerk and ignoring you. I probably haven't gotten the email. Wow, things really slow. All right, gang, I think we're going to button things up here. There's nothing going on right now. Um, the market's in a bit of a bind. It's You can see it's drifted back inside the sideways trading range. If you are going to continue trading today, well, you got to give the nod to the buyers, but just ever so slightly. We have broken this morning downtrend there wasn't that much of a pushback but the fact is we are still retracing the same kind of numbers the market very non-committal right now and as such we'll probably just kind of leave it alone for a bit all right everyone i will see you again tomorrow morning have yourselves a very profitable day if you can I'll see you later. Bye for now.